honestly, it's just, I think that's the biggest thing that's, it's, it's so important to support each other, man. You know, I mean, sometimes there's so many, so much noise in social media land and now we're, we're kind of, kind of all in it because of the situation that, you know, we just have to be conscious of like stopping for a second, like, you know, that's the currency now, liking something, commenting on something, sharing it, just seeing what you can do to support, especially since most of it doesn't even cost us much other than a few minutes of our time and the, the value can be exponential. So I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to support, man. You're doing amazing things for, for our community. Well, I have to say, I mean, that, I wanted to get into that because, you know, one thing I always saw as one of, I, I would look to when we were in all these musical situations together where you'd hire me for, or, or we'd be in this, it, we'd be on tour is that you have a really good ability to take a situation and lift it up, right? Like you come into maybe an organization and get it going, get the arts moving, get getting the groups booked, getting, or you come into a band situation and, and being a musical director, you're off, that's often a role you know, you have. Where did you develop this ability or what are the, what are the skills of being kind of a leader when it comes to the arts, either in an organization or I wanted to kind of get into as far as the band, because you're often the musical director or the band leader for your own band, New Standard. How do you feel, you know, what are those skills that you, you've kind of honed? Because I, I know them. I, I mean, I experienced them, but I think that some people really lack those skills and could really, what are those things? Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a, a kind of a quick, funny story. So I was, I was on tour with Sean Martin, who's one of the best people and piano players on, on the planet, by the way. Shout out to Sean. Um, yeah, and, and, and we're after show, we're chilling, um, and a friend comes up and says, you know, he, he was asking some similar questions. And I said, well, man, you just got to ask. You just got to ask, you know, and the worst they could say is no, but you got you to ask. And he's like, but ask what? Ask. And, and, and Sean looks over at me and says, you know, what, what, you know, want to know what was happening. And I told him the context of the conversation. And he goes, the, the problem is, he looks over to this guy and goes, Drew doesn't realize that that's not a normal skill. You know, it's something, and it's something that I just... I think as a result of having lot older brothers who are a lot older than me, you know, you, you're kind of forced to grow up. But at, at the same time, I fell in love with the vibraphone at 15 years old and realized that I just wanted to share it. So I, I used to push my vibraphone, man, down to the end of the block in Mission Bay and Boca Raton. And there was like three little of those strip malls, like, a, you know, with the Fridays and a bunch of little stores in them and stuff like that on the corner of 441 and Glaze Road. And I would literally go from door to door. I don't care if it was a law firm. I don't care if it was an ice cream shop. I don't care if it was a gym. I was like, hey, I play, I play vibraphone. You know, I got a piano player friend of mine. You know, you, you guys want some live music? We'll come in. We'll just do one day. At hair salons didn't matter. You know, we'll do one day. We'll do one show. And don't pay us anything. And if you like it and we bring people, then you can hire us for a month. That's the deal. And I would do that everywhere. Um, and of course, people would just look at me like, yeah, okay, kid, you know, whatever. You know, just, but some would like, you know, coffee shops and borders, books and stuff like that would be like, yeah, okay, you know, we'll let you talk to this person and we'll do it. Played at a hair salon before. I, I didn't know that wasn't a thing. I was 15. I don't, I don't know, you know, and, um, and we built some pretty cool things that way. So it's always been this idea, you know, as a vibraphone player, especially, you never get, I don't get called for stuff, you know, um, you know, maybe if I practice more, I don't know, but I never get called for stuff. Um, and you always had, I always had to make my own way and figure out how to do that. And early on, I realized that the best way to get a lot of support is to support others, like add value to others. I, you know, I didn't know that's what you call it, but, you know, I would try to show up for everybody's everything. Um, and just in turn, it always comes back around, man. Well, I mean, but to what you're saying too, when the opportunities didn't present themselves, just naturally, like, you know, you're saying you took the initiative to whether it is, there is no, there are no gigs or performance opportunities maybe for vibraphone because it's not the go-to instrument maybe for a typical situation. You're going around do, making it happen because regardless. So that initiative, I think, and that kind of like internal leadership was generating right. those opportunities. Too. Yeah. That's, yeah. And at the end of the day, if you, people don't know about the instrument or they don't know about you, I mean, this could apply to anything. They don't know about, you don't know you. So the mo best you could do is try to put yourself in a situation to educate, which is marketing, right? I mean, to put yourself in a situation to be able to show them the value that that would have as a, hey, me and you as a guitar piano duo, me and you, I mean, piano vibe duo or a guitar vibe duo. Y you might not have ever thought of it because you don't listen. It's not ubiquitous in, in public culture, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, being able to say, well, let's just try it. And they say, okay, well, I never thought about it. Yeah, that sounds good. I have time. Let's, let's go ahead and play together. Whereas had you never asked, they just, it's not because they don't like you or they don't want to hear you or they don't even appreciate you. They just never put that together. So it's really on you, on us. 
And I think that when you talk about trying to lift up organizations and the nonprofit work and stuff like that that I've done, it's the same thing. You know, it's it's a matter of you know these people in this community don't know about jazz. You know, yeah. you have a, you, so we have an opportunity to show them and show them correctly. I remember having the fight when we were trying to program Arts Garage about, hey, I, I heard this certain player of a certain instrument with backing tracks, and he plays at this wedding place and this place. And I said, that's fine. Nothing against that. However, if we're going to be something different and educate people on what's possible and the beauty behind the communication of jazz music and what we're trying to do, we need to be very aggressive about finding the best of what we're trying to show them. You know, and, and give the people some credit. Like they want to hear quality stuff. They just don't know, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I have to say that, I mean, every situation we've been in, whether the all situation ultimately continues for a certain length, I mean, it just always improved. I always just saw that, like, when we did jams or when you were ho in new places, when you were hosting jams in new places or at the Arts Garage, I mean, it definitely thrived and the, and the audience received those were some of those performances that. I won't forget because the audience reception was so overwhelming about just the the feeling of joy to be there and the way you presented that and communicated, hey, we're all here to do something to share in this moment. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was something unique to what you do.